Hello everyone, welcome to SNA Let's Play. Play. We are back <laughs> after a very, very long time, which we apologize. Yes. We apologize, we've been so busy with everything. Life. Life. And it's and like we have to get to we have to be able to get together. Yeah. You know? In our in our Sims 2, um, in our Sims uh, episode, we did explain of why. Mm -hmm. So if you look at our Sims Just watch um, that. Hundred baby <laughs> challenge, no what we've been going through now so. now also um um we don't remember our voices that we did for them no we there's don't. like a, a few that we may know but if they sound like crap it's, they sound like crap yeah not our problem but anyway so we're just gonna just get the, started the I only guess. one i can remember is taco <laughs> oh the girl <laughs> all right here we go one two three well yes one day i'd like to i think it was talking about like controlling if she wanted to ever be the CEO of Shinomura yeah. Industries or whatever the heck it's called. Chisaki looks satisfied at having having gotten an answer out of me. I get the distinct feeling that answering it honestly was a good thing. Oh, crap. I need to get the other shit up. Uh, let me pause for a second. Okay. We continue to eat in relative silence after that, and I find myself enjoying the meal. Chisaki is a super good cook. I'm peering at Chisaki as I eat when something Tatsuya said crosses my mind. He was vehe ve vehement, vehem whatever, about people's dreams being taken away against their wishes. Maybe if I ask about Chisaki, Chisaki's, I can better understand him. Mrs. Yurikimura, can I ask you something? Of course, darling. Go ahead. I was wondering if you could maybe tell me about your cafe. Her blue eyes suddenly sparkle with happiness. What are you doing? What are you doing? Girl, you reaching over me? Of course. Oh, wait. Of course. It's not much of a story, though. I'd always wanted to have my own career, and cooking and baking was something I liked to do as a hobby. But... My father would never let me work or do anything for myself until the clan started losing money. It's ironic, but, girl, it's thanks to that I was able to convince him to let me work and borrow the money to start Blue Sky. What are you doing, girl? You freaking pulling this out of my eye. My ear, not eye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. I named it Blue Sky because it represents the freedom I felt when I was able to finally open it up, as well as the kind of atmosphere I wanted. Oops, my mouse went bye-bye. Days when the skies were bright and blue are the kind of days I always want to see. I wish the clan hadn't started doing poorly, but at least something good came out of Katsunosuke's ambitions. Sakuko scoffs and rolls her eyes. Oh, yeah. Here's your little girl part, girl. <laughs> Katsu is an idiot. Who doesn't give a damn about the clan? He only cares about his women and money. Oh, jeez. Sakuko. You're too young to use language like that. <laughs> All right. Fine, fine. I'm sorry. Girl. <laughs> I look down at my hands. I feel like I've been suddenly kicked in the stomach. The things Tatsuya had said back to, in my father's office, and now after hearing Chisaki's story, all of it is making me feel worse about the deal that I don't know what to do. <laughs> he said there are hundreds of people who will be affected by this. People like the Yukimuras and the people they hire too. Sakuko, would you go check on Toshiyuki? Well, all right, but he's probably still talking to his girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> Sakuko jumps to her feet and skips out of the kitchen. She's like, yes, I want to disturb him. I want to keep him away from talking to his girlfriend. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the sound of fists pounding against the door can be heard all the way here. Toshi! Oh, shit. Wrong person. <laughs> Go, girl. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> No more. <laughs> Toshi! <laughs> so Yoshi. <laughs> I, a click of the 
door of door opening and muffled voices follow and hurried step footsteps and sakuku quickly reappears in the kitchen he doesn't want to come to dinner because of suji what why oh yeah he walked in on her when she wasn't wearing i think she was in her peonies or something <laughs> yeah, she's like, so got to get into the bath. She's like, uh, uh. Almost instantly, my face burns with embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> I know why Toshi Yuki isn't coming down to dinner, but I don't ever want to explain it. <laughs> I quietly go get back to eating and hope that no one comments on my red face. After we finish dinner, Chisaki, Sakuko, and I sit in the living room together, having some tea while Tetsuya finishes up cleaning in the kitchen. All the ladies get to eat together. Sakuko cheerfully tells her mother about her day while I sit back and drink my tea. Chisaki smiles and nods along to her daughter's story, happily making the appropriate reactions in the right moments. And then she actually took the book from his hands and hit him over the head with it. (laughs) <laughs> it's getting so late. I should probably head home sometime soon. I put down my teacup and a gentle and the gentle clink of porcelain brings Chisaki's attention to me. She must have good ears. As if reading my mind, she smiles. It's getting quite late, isn't it? Oh, yes. I think I should head home now. Nonsense. Whoa. You'll stay the night with us. Hmm. <laughs> It's not like someone who likes you is in another room or anything like that. No. <laughs> Our house is deep in the Chowa district, so we're quite far away from everything else. Oh, hello. Yeah. I'm not sure if I should. I should. I wouldn't want to trouble you. It's no trouble, dear. <laughs> I swear she's trying to hook us up with that, so yeah. Hmm, I know. With our son. And... How could we possibly let you go after you passed out today? Mm-hmm. You haven't said anything, but I'm sure you're still tired and basically, feverish from earlier. Basically, whenever she was mad and stuff earlier, so, yeah. Yeah. Which I, was kind of interesting. Yeah, right? I stare silently at Chisaki, trying to come up with some reason that I couldn't or shouldn't stay. But I can't think of any way to refuse her without sounding absurd. Yep. <laughs> I know, right? I hold back a sigh, smile, and give her a little bow. Thank you. Then I'll take you up on your generous offer. As Chizaki's smile takes in more, <laughs> more Cheshire-like quality, oh. I realize this is likely not something I could have gotten away with refusing. <laughs> She's mm-hmm. trying to hook you up mm-hmm. with her son. Excellent! I could just see her with her head down with the, mm-hmm. with the chest. I could just see the smile on with her. With the Chester smile, basically, is what it's called. It's just Whoa. like... Her, she claps her hands, looking positively <laughs> delighted. Where would you like to sleep? Oh, oh. Could You, you could bunk with Sakuko or in Tatsuya's room. <laughs> Girl. Mm. What? What? Tatsuya's room? She giggles. <laughs> We would have brought you to his room earlier, but it's at the far end of the hall upstairs. It was just easier to take you to Sakuko's room since it was closer. Um. (laughs) If you're sleeping with me, you're getting the floor. Because there's no way I'm sleeping in the same bed as a stranger. That my brother has seen naked. No, just kidding. (laughs) Um, Oh, wait. And besides. The bed is too small. (laughs) The most logical choice is just to take the bed, even if Tatsu is in it. Um, girl, your sister wants to hook us up too. (laughs) I know. He's too much of a wuss to do anything to to you anyway. (laughs) Oh my god! (laughs) She looks looks to her daughter with a sigh. (sighs) Sakuko. (laughs) She then looks back at me and smiles. I completely understand if you aren't comfortable bunking it with my son, Sujin. Who, by the way, is a perfect gentleman. <laughs> um, she says it that way. Then what should I do? He, <laughs> you're adorable. <laughs> oh, God. I was just teasing you, honestly. <laughs> oh, God. The guest room is actually free since my parents left last week, so there's no need to worry. <laughs> 
teasing me? Seriously? Ugh. She almost gave me a heart attack. <laughs> um, all right. Thank you. <laughs> After my stay is decided for the night, we sit back comfortable... <coughs> comfortably to finish our tea mm -hmm. <laughs> with chisaki's instructions i find the guest oops i clicked on something else guest room <laughs> i find oh no glasses boy mm. Oof. Mm. anyway so uh, oh uh, yeah. he almost looks really young to be her age i mean he almost looks i know like a freshman in high school or something <laughs> yeah i find he, that mm -hmm. he looks better when his shirt's up in Oh, look at that. Mm, I'm chest. Okay. I find Tatsuya already in there wearing pajamas. He is finishing making the bed for me. Oh, he's so sweet. His eyes brief briefly flit to me as he finishes fluffing the pillows. Once he's done, Tatsuya walks past me. He's Good smart. night. There you go. <laughs> I stand next to the bed watching him leave with Tatsuya only a step away from the leaving the room. I feel the urge to call out to him. Wait, ta uh, Yukimira, wait. He stops in his tracks. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I had like a hiccup burp thing. Oh my goodness. He stops in his tracks and turns his head to look at me. Tatsuya's expression doesn't change and his eyes reveal nothing. It only serves to make me feel all the more awkward. Oh, what should we do? Where is it? Um, where is it? Where is it? Okay, thank him. We're going to thank him for all he's done. Um, I wanted to thank you for, well, for everything. So thank you. Wow. Girly. Girl. Considering what I've put you through, there's no need to thank me. I've done anything to make things easier for you. Then I'm the one who's thankful. I'll be in the next room if you need anything. Mm. He doesn't give me a chance to reply and walks out, closing the door behind him. Yeah, because, because, um, you know. I stare at the spot where Tatsuya had been standing for just a second. A sec, just a second ago. <laughs> Ugh, that guy. I can't tell when he thinks of me. He's infuriating. Trying my best to ignore the annoyed state he left me in, I crawled into bed. As soon as my head hits the pillow, my eyes start to feel heavy with sleep. Just how exhausted I truly am hits me all at once, and before I know it, I'm out like a light. I feel like I'm floating in nothingness. I look around me, but all I see is endless darkness. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, 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 exclamation point. <laughs> when I open my mouth to speak, sneak, 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 no. And when I open my mouth to speak, no sound comes out of my lips. Where am I? I try to move forward, floating along easily. No matter how fast I move, I'm not even sure if I'm moving at all. I can't tell up from down or left from right. Is this a dream, or...? I look around again as if ex uh, expecting something strange to pop into existence. Nothing? I float helplessly in the empty space. What feels like minutes soon turn to hours. Then days, weeks, and I start to lose self sense of myself. I hold my hands up in front of my face. At least I can see something this time. As numbness slowly overtakes my body, I briefly feel a strange tug at my chest, and I can hear a distant voice calling my name. I look around, but there's nothing and no one in sight. Another faint whisper and the feeling of wind on my skin. You want to say it, girl? Sujin. The sensation of something tugging at my chest. It's weird to test though. Comes back stronger this time. It feels like an invisible string is attached to my grip cage, pulling at me. I touch my chest, but I can neither see nor feel any sort of string. A gentle breeze carries through the void, carrying the scent of hyacinths with that. With it. Sujin. The whisper gets louder and another tug at my chest. It pulls me forward with a jerk. Ugh! What the? I can almost recognize the voice that keeps calling out to me. Suji! The whispers now turn into muffled yells. Another tug at my chest violently yanks me into the seemingly endless darkness. 
As if sensing something invisible in front of me, I hold up my hands in front of my face and close my eyes. I crash right through something. The sound of shattering glass upon impact and the feeling of falling. My eyes snap open at the sensation of wind rushing past my ears. I'm falling. Ah! I see the ground coming closer, but I'm paralyzed, completely helpless. There's nothing I can do to stop it. No, 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 no. I can see the field of countless purple hyacinths dancing in the wind. That's all I can sense. I, all I can see as I fall. My screams are frozen in my throat. I force my eyes shut and brace myself for impact. One, two, three. <gasps> that Perfect. is the- Nothing. <laughs> so, just so you know, I don't do those on purpose. Those just randomly come up on their own. Those are hiccups and burps. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much the same for me. It clicks in my mind that I no longer feel like I'm falling and my eyes op- snap open. My body is floating just inches away from the ground. A purple hyacinth tickles the tip of my nose. With a sudden thump, I finally fall into the sea of flowers. I sit up and look around. There's nothing but the field of hyacinths in sight. What should I do? I move to get up when the voice from before rings out once again. This time from right behind me. Sujin! I'm petrified in in an instant. That voice. Oh, maybe it's not Tatsuya. Mm. Slowly, I force myself to turn around. Uh -uh. (laughs) It's Shizuka! He's a mommy dearest. Shizuka stands before me, looking down at me with cold eyes. Oh, creepy. I stumble back and fall. You. What? I'm sorry, Sujin. Shizuka doesn't give me time to even comprehend her words. In a split second, her face is just inches away from mine. I can't move. Her eyes start to glow, and a tingling numbness spreads out from my chest to part every part of my body. I got a hiccup again. Damn it. There you go. It has... It's as if a billion of tiny needles start to poke and prod me. No, please, wait, please, no. An emotion I can't quite place flickers in her eyes for the briefest of moments. As if completely deaf to my pleas, Shizuki, Shizuki, Shizuki reaches out (laughs) to me. She touches my forehead right between the eyes with her index finger. At first, nothing happens, and I dare hope that nothing will. But that hope is dashed soon enough. I yelp at the feeling of the intense cold against my skin. Shizuka moves away from me, but it doesn't go away. The cold spreads out rapidly from where she touched me. So cold, it burns. I can't, it's hard to breathe. My lungs are closing up. I look up at Shizuka. She watches me in silence as my body starts to freeze. Please, stop. My voice cuts out. I can't breathe. Everything starts to fade around me. All I see before the darkness takes me is her glowing eyes. Creepy. Mm. I start all awake with a gasp for breath. It feels as if I had actually been suffocating. I can feel the hot tears running down my face, but there's nothing I can do to stop them. I blink to chase the blurriness away. As the world comes more into focus, I finally see it. Aww. Tatsuya's worried face looking down at me. Aw, he gently touches my arm. Oh, her tears. Oh. Fujimoto, why don't you try and sit up? My eyes trail downwards to where Tatsuya's hand is touching my arm. Oh, so sweet. He seems to realize where my gaze is and immediately removes his hand away from mine. Yeah, he had a little bit. Um, don't scream, please. I just thought I should wake you up. You were screaming and crying a lot. Aww. I could hear it through the wall. Aww. I run my hands over my face, wiping the tears away. My heart is beating fast and hard. It drums wildly against my ribcage. Everything seemed to so real in my dream. Was it even a dream? I can still feel the chill on my skin, and the smell of hyacinths still hang in the air. Ooh, that's creepy. Hangs in the air. Mm-hmm. Tatsuya stands up, looking no less worried than before. I'll go back to bed then. Really, dude? Just gonna leave me when I'm, like, going through this struggle? He turns away, but before he can make a single step, I grab his arm. 
I shouldn't. Too afraid to look up at him, I look away. Wait. Please. Please, just stay here a minute longer. Tatsuya doesn't say anything, but he doesn't move either. So I continue. I'm sorry. I know that what I'm asking is for isn't rational. I know that. But I... I'm scared. I feel so scared and helpless, and I don't... It would help me if you could just stay here. He doesn't say anything for a while. Eventually, he frowns and sighs. Really, dude. When he begins to, t to talk, I look up at him. Can I sit on the bed, then? Oh, he blushing, too. Mm -hmm. I let go of his arm and nod. Tatsuya sits down on the very edge of the bed, maintaining as much distance between us as possible in this situation. I find myself scooting closer to him like a child desperate for comfort from a parent. <laughs> and you, you call him, a, you treat him like a parent? Really, girl? Mm. Mm. After a few moments of silent, tat, tat, silence, Tatsuya slowly, hesitantly, reaches out and takes my trembling hands. Aww. His hands feel so warm. He's not usually this warm, is he? With a sigh, I relax a little and lean against his shoulder. I can feel his body stiffen, but he doesn't move. With his soothing presence next to me, it's like the floodgates open. Oh my gosh. Tears begin to roll down my cheeks, one after the other, and soon enough, I'm sobbing on him. Oh, poor Tetsuya. Oh. <laughs> Tetsuya doesn't comment. Instead, he puts his arm around me. Oh, and I lie my head on his chest. Oh, I like this. It's cute. <laughs> I don't know how much time passes, but before long, I manage to stop crying. I try to dry my tears away from the back with the back of my hand. Can I tell you something I haven't told anyone else? I look up at Tetsuya. He fidgets under my gaze. I don't have to be a mind reader to tell what's going through his head. Nervousness and confusion as to why I would share something with him, of all people. I don't have to wait long for him to decide. He nods and whispers. I'll listen. I breathe in deeply. I'm going to do this. It's okay. I need this. I should have told someone weeks ago. Before I came to Hajiwara, I had no idea any of this existed. As far as I was concerned, magic and drag dragons and anything of the sort was all fictional. But then, then during one weekend, my mother asked to meet her. And it was then that she revealed it to me. She, she told me that I'm not human. That she's some ancient sorceress and that she used alchemy to create me. Tetsuya frowns at the word create, but doesn't comment. She said that I'm not human, and I'm something called a homunculus. She... I shudder. She forced me into some ritual I still can't comprehend. It gave me her powers and what she called the curse of immortality. And that's... that's why I don't have a handle on my powers, and why I know so little about this world. I let myself fall silent for a little. Having said this much already, would it hurt to tell him everything? Let's just keep going till we get... Yeah, we were, we're trying to figure out what time to end this, but because it's in a serious part, I don't know if I want to cut yeah. it off right now. That's my past, but there's something else too. Something else I've been thinking about lately. My father chose me to be the, his successor for Shinomura Industries. That's why, why I was, I'm studying business. He's always been so good to me. I want to make him proud. But honestly, right now I'm not sure if I'm cut out for the role of CEO at all. Because time after time I keep messing everything up. And if I'm not, then everything will fall to my little sister, who has dreams of her own. Yeah. In a small voice, almost too low to hear, I add, And I'll have failed her. Tatsuya says nothing. I wonder if he might be too shocked about some everything I've spilled to say anything at all. But that's when his quiet voice cuts through the complete silence in the room. I've often wondered if I can do what it takes to lead the Yukimura family. I'm the eldest, so I've always taken on all responsibilities, so my siblings don't have to worry about anything. His voice somehow feels so soothing. My dreams, my hobbies, I've long since given them up. I feel like I had to become an adult while I was still a child. 
even with all I'm doing, my clan still suffers. My family still suffers. So I don't know if I'm the right person. Don't know that I can tell if you're qualified. I'm not good enough yet. I make a lot of mistakes. I'm trying very hard to hear what Tatsuya has to say, but my eyes feel so heavy that I find myself fading in and out of consciousness. Though always end up hurting since you... So tired. My whole body feels heavy, and I lean into him, feeling comfortable. Is he going to confess to you while you fall asleep? <laughs> oh my god. That, that would, would suck. That, that, like, it happens all the time. Oh, right. Okay. Maybe if I just close my eyes for a little. Just a minute. Hi, Nai. Well, we will let Yay! you guys go here. I hope you are enjoying, and we'll see you in the next one. Yeah. Bye. Awesome. Bye. Bye.